is professional drummer of the highest order. Uh, he's my uh, guest in the studio. Yes, I'd like to yes. welcome uh, Craig Redman. Yes, welcome to the show. Yes, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. You're gonna have a great time with the interview. Uh, you got some good things going. Got this uh, drum workshop coming up on February 15th and 16th, respectively. Check this man out. He's been doing it for a long time. But first, we're gonna get into uh, some Super Bowl talk. And then the passing of, uh, unfortunately, Frank Robson, who's a baseball pioneer in his own right. We're gonna start with the Super Bowl. And uh, first and foremost, Craig, give your observation about. Super Bowl 53. Wow. First of all, I'm going to say this. When I speak, mm -hmm. I've been a football fan all my life, mm -hmm. all my sports, and I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, number one. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't feeling too good that yeah. the Patriots tied us. Yeah, they tied us. Six, you know, six. with six Super Bowls. Yeah. Um, you know, just the offense just was weak for the Rams. The defense was great. But you can hold, you can go so long. As an athlete, you can mm -hmm. hold it to the that type of caliber team down so long, but I'm not taking anything in a, away. As much as this is bitter, sweet to me, yeah. I'm not going to take anything away from the Patriots organization. You know, Bill Belichick and the organization is, is old school. Um, you, you play your position, you do your job yeah. as a professional, yeah. you get it, you see the resources. You know, discipline um, is something that um, they carry on very well. Um, that's what I'm disappointed about my team, my Steelers. Yeah. And I joined, but the discipline, um, I really believe that the coach lost the locker room in the last two or three years. With all the great talent we had, pound for pound, probably one of the best teams in the NFL, um, you know, hands down. But life, music, and everything that goes on, you can't do anything without discipline. So hands, I, had to, I tip my hat to the Patriots organization. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to say that, but I, I will. And the Rams um, just wasn't wasn't ready, you know. I saw the quarterback fold. Uh, just he, he's nerves. When I saw him walk off the field after a first down, he didn't realize they had a first down because of a call, I believe, a penalty call. And he was like, he didn't want to be there after a while. It was too big for him. Yeah. And it showed. No, no offense. So hats off to New England again. Yeah. And I wish they would do something with that division. Yeah, they got, they, it has to get better. Yeah, man. that division, they need to it's start the mixing, yeah, put some other teams in that division. Yeah. That's already already Realignment. Yeah, yeah, that's all realignment. There's already yeah. eight wins for them already. Now. Yeah, automatically they got yeah, eight six, wins already. Six, six to eight six, wins already. Yeah, six wins because they play uh, twice right. against their opponents. So that's like six games. Yeah, that's so. so they're going to win either five or six. Yeah, so when you look at, to me, I, I think it was the boring, most boring Super Bowl I've ever seen. It was boring. It was low scoring, it was competitive, but it was boring. It was no excitement. No, it was I mean, no excitement at all. Only none. thing, the reason why I, I give it some thumbs up is because the Rams' defense did as best they could. Yeah, they, they did they their did best. Eight in a row, three and outs. That's tough. No, the, the, the offense, the offense, they, yeah. they, they punted eight straight times. Yeah, eight straight times. The, 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 yeah, they didn't do their job, the, def the offense. Right. And when the defense is doing their job, it's, it's complimentary football. And... The offense I mean, didn't do their job. For it to be three to three halftime, you know, with a Super Bowl champion caliber team like the Patriots, they, they did good. Yeah, Our they just ran out of gas. They offense, got tight. offense, listen, you cannot go eight in a row. Yes, you can't and do out that. eight times yeah. and expect something good to happen. And then it's gonna, it, takes, it took its toll it on the defense. Toll. Absolutely. When they, when they got that last drive with 9.45 to go, I think, Brady threw it to Gronk, then to Edelman. Then he went down the field to Gronk. Because you got to play that team. You got to realize maybe, what, two years ago, they were down at halftime by 24, by a, a well-known team. by 21 to 3. Yeah. The Atlanta. The Atlanta. And they came back against them. So you yeah. can imagine. Yeah, you got to play 60 play, minutes. You got to play 60 minutes with these guys. Yeah. Hands and Belichick down, is the reason why they won. Belichick. Belichick. Not against Brady, but Belichick yeah. was the reason Brady, why Brady won. Brady um, was, was, was um, you know, um, really, the last couple of Super Bowls, he didn't really have to done nothing. Yo, he, he didn't play well in this one. Yeah, they didn't give him MVPs all they want to because that's what America does. Yeah, Edelman won the MVP. Yeah. You could have gave it to Stephon Gilmore. You could have gave right. it to um, the other right. guy, uh, Devontae, what they, Dante Hightower. Right, right. But, you know, you got to realize where you're living at. And, you know, with the, pol the policies up there, their life is, you yeah. just got to, you know, you, you want to keep it that. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. called 
like it is. He wanna keep the white America strong. So MVP, you know, gotta go to him. And, no, they uh, no Julia Edel Edelman. Oh, won the um MVP. Oh, they gave it to him. Yeah, Edelman. Oh, Edelman got it. Oh, okay, yeah. good. But they still saying um you know Tom Brady's the greatest. He's the goal. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You wanna hear that? I don't think so. I think um Montana's a good race because he played in a tougher era. Oh, absolutely. Defenses. He had well, a lot of surgeries. I mean, after, got took a lot of hits. After you, if you if you're gonna say that, then then you got to go to my guy. Bradshaw got four Super Bowl yeah. Super Bowl losses. I mean, it was tough. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they and, never give him the due because they because right. the team that he had collectively. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. You got well, a point. Hey, Way Niners had a, a much better explosive team, if you ask me. You yeah, know? they did. Yeah, they did. The West Coast offense. Yeah. West Coast offense, man. Get that two or three yards and make it count. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a boring Super Bowl. Yeah, give credit to the Patriots, but that was a boring Super Bowl, <laughs> it man. That, a Super Bowl. Yeah, it was a terrible Super Bowl to watch. <laughs> terrible. It was, it was hey, bad. Hey, man. listen, I hosted the party. I, I hosted the party, so I was almost fell asleep. Yeah, that's what made it boring. I, I tell you, I tell you what made it great for me. I was a field goal away if um, the Rams would have made their last field goal. I would have won the pool. Mm -hmm. And my uh, dog, you know, my bet, you know, I bet the pool. I would have had won with the points and all. I would have took that, you know. I would, <laughs> I would have took it the next day if they would have made that field goal. I picked the boxes and I would have won. And plus, the ratings was very low. It was a low. Oh, it, it, it drew less than 100 million. Ah, uh, so you got to say to yourself, the Saints would have played a better Super Bowl. Oh, Saints yes. Ball. Yeah, they had a veteran better. quarterback in Drew Brees. Right. It makes the Saints look even better because they they would have given America more, a better Super Bowl. More than, more than three points? Yeah, more than three points. They would have put points on the board. That phantom call, you know, yeah. that they made. They, they, the no call. That's yeah. what they say, the no call. Mm -hmm. um, that happened. Um, yeah. But, you know... Yeah, that's it. That's what you can I do. Just, I just, I just, we got to get set for Pittsburgh. Yeah, they got to get it right, man, because. I can talk about these guys for so long because I'm a Steeler fan. Mike Talman, you think he's on the hot seat? Well, I think I, he should I know be. he's on the hot seat. He got to be on the hot, hot seat. On the hot seat. He ain't no thinking about it. They underachieved too much, and, and they should. Great talent. Within yeah. the last, every year he's been a, a, yeah. a coach, he had great talent. Yeah, and they keep underachieving. Something well, going on in that locker room must be. Yeah, got to be. You know, if I must say, I must, I, I don't know, Brother Mitchell, if you know what you got in front of you. I gotta watch it because I'm on the radio. But sometimes you gotta understand you can't put too many of us rich and, and too many of uh, us, you know, Afro American men with all that energy, high energy, and the eagles and that money uncontrollable. We lost the locker room. Look at it. Yeah. You know, yeah. You oh, yeah. Antonio selfish, Brown. Uh, selfishness. They're not team players. I spoke against Antonio Brown after he did the locker room situation. Yeah, you went on Facebook Live. Right. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm, I'm an ex-athlete. I know you cannot win with individual guys who's not team players. Yeah, he's not a team player. If, if, if they're he's not a team players, right. He's looking at the stats, patting his stats, want to see what he can do. So now he's going to get a chance to pat his stats. We're so sorry, team hopeful, that they put him on. Patch his stats, but you'll never see a season. Yeah, because it seems like he wanted to catch 10 passes for 160 yards and three touchdowns. Right. And lose instead of winning with just catching five passes for 50 yards and no touchdown. Yeah, and knocking over Gatorade. Um, yeah. You know, container. Yeah. S speaking out to a quarterback who's been to the Super Bowl three times and won two of them. Yeah. Your your Heine haven't won anything. Nothing. And, and I told Kai, I said, you gotta look at the bigger picture. A couple years back, oh, you know what we say, no, no, you gotta understand. He's nice and all, yeah, individually, and that's the way of this world. You cannot. Within the last two or three years, the superstars that the Patriots had on the team, they ain't won one Super Bowl. That's it. Because they have a team. Yeah. You can go to the Super Bowl winning with them. You can lose with the team. They win with the team. They don't go and take all the superstars. When they got them superstars at the end of their career, it didn't work out for them. When they got Randy Moss, no, it didn't work for them. Yeah, you're Still talking about the win. Patriots. Right. Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots. Yeah, they don't win the superstar. That's why makes this dynasty so unique. They never had the great players. They never had superstars. They're not talented. This may be have been the least talented Super Bowl champion ever. And they still win the Super Bowl. They've been going. Listen, they've been to nine Super Bowls out of the last 18. Yeah. That's with, amazing. With least least talented. Least talent. <laughs> That's amazing.
Yes, with less talent. With less talent. That's so Because they buy into what Belichick is about. He's no nonsense. Team. Team. Yeah, team. It's a team. Listen, yeah. you can't come in a, 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 a original studio like this and run this show without everybody being a team. Yeah, you all have a team concept. If, if your team is not good around you, if you're not fitting in with your team here, doing this, this person doing that, it, it won't work for you. You know, I mean, I use that with everything because it, sports is entertainment, but so is music. Stopped it a long time ago. You can be great, have a bunch of great people up here, just loud, unruly, and unprofessional. You're done. Yeah, that's the right. Next act that come along that's professional, put together, well drilled, it's gonna take you out. Mm-hmm. They'll be remembered before the superstars. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's uh, our observations about the Super Bowl. Um, now let's get into um, unfortunately um, this week also there's a passing of legendary baseball player. Uh, Frank Robinson, wow. he's a pioneer. You no, know, he's a dude that was the first black man to manage a, a baseball team. The Cleveland Indians back in, what, I think, 1975. And, and uh, he paved the way, opened doors for other black men to be leaders of men in other sports. So talk about uh, well, his contributions. You know, um, to get an MVP in both leagues, mm-hmm. American League, National. International League, first of all, was amazing. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. Um, and, you know, as a player, he gave his all, he played up to standards, and it was like, uh, you know, and it was a tough time for him. It yeah, was, he was, grew up, a, he was a disciple of Jackie Robinson. Right. And there was a lot of talk, you know, he was mean, tough, but I think you had to be tough as a black man in those days when you're dealing with the Jim Crow those, South. That, cause those, that's, that's those what's, days? Okay, because, you know, you definitely, that's a, that's a fact. And it's unfortunately and sad that in 2019, we still ain't too far away from that as, as men, Afro-American men. We still have to feel the same way and keep that drive. And, you know, yeah, and, that's and, the and he did it. He set the, he set the pace when it came down to that stage of an athlete um, yeah. both, in both divisions. And then turn around as a coach mm-hmm. when he became a coach, manager. A manager. Wow. He did it still then. You know, yeah. kept that drive. Yeah. He knew how to deal with diversity, mm-hmm. the, the mixed ball players. Then, you know, the ball players coming from other countries, you know, not knowing how to understand English and, uh, and American baseball. Because, again, I'm an ex athlete. I played first base, you know, in Little League, Little League High School, and right field. I respect every sport, but um, that was my sport, baseball, really, you know, and I respect it. Just to know and, and just think about what they went through, you know, with, as a player. Yeah, going all the stuff they had to pay. Hank Garen, when he was trying to break, this is what the 45th, actually the 45th anniversary of Hank Garen breaking Babe Ruth's record. Right. 1974, so. And they still never talk about it. Everything yeah. is still Babe Ruth to them. Yeah, they, no, because white people didn't, they, to be fair, they didn't like right. him breaking a white man's record. No, he received a lot of hate mail. Sure. And. It wasn't as celebrated. Probably not celebrated to this day. Oh, uh, yeah. It, not it not as it, it should be. It's a lot Possibly. to continue. Hypothetically. Right. You, you know, when we start talking about sports and that platform that these guys stand as I, I tip my hat off to him and everyone else who um, got a chance to make it through that era. And, you know, he really was a pioneer. And I, I, my condolence going out to the family and the loved ones that are close to him. Yeah, yeah, rest in peace to um, Frank Robinson. His contribution to the game of baseball will never be forgotten. Amen. We're not like him, so rest Amen. in peace to and kudos to his family. So now let's get into the interview portion of the show. The reason why, you know, Craig, Mr. Craig Redman is here because of, you know, it's all about the interview. So we're going to get into it, the first five questions. Then we you know, move on to the first three break songs and continue on with the rest of this interview. Now the first question is, uh, where are you from? Oh, wow. I'm born and raised. I'm a Pattersonian, Silk City. You know, mm-hmm. one Patterson, one town. Yep. Um, the great city of Patterson. Born and raised in 1966. I'm a 63. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm thankful to be here. And I am the proud son of Henry Redman Sr., Billy Don Redman, uh, Billy Don Smith Redman, and Henry Redman Sr. 
son, one of them, out of seven, I am the youngest boy, male in the family. And I'm thankful, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a grandson of Irene Smith, and I'm a grandson of, that was my mother's mother, and um, Roy Smith, who was my grandfather. I um, never got a chance to meet him, but I grew up with my grandmother, a great person. proud father, of four. Um, I have four children. Uh, one is Christian here. Mark, and Paula, and Christian. He's my youngest son. And I have a daughter, Kayla, 24. And a uh, big happy birthday shout out to my youngest daughter, Amaya Redman, which her birthday was yesterday. And she turned 19 yesterday. She's in school. I just thank God, um, you know, we have a proud uncle of a lot of nieces and nephews. <laughs> a lot of nieces and nephews, but I'm uh, proud of them. And I am uh, an employee, one of the employees of the Patsy School System for 20 years, um, dealing with um, special ed and behavior disorder. Um, I'm at currently at Eastside, lean on me, the home of the ghost. I'm working with the drum line. I'm a professional musician. I traveled all over the world. I work with a lot of artists. A couple of great artists from um, here, too. One of them being George Benson. Yeah, well, yeah I was going to get into that later, later on. That later yeah, on. I got that's in my court. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all about just the way. Right. Where you from? Okay, yeah. well, I'm yeah. from that's, 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah. Leave it like that. Yeah, because yeah. city. Yeah, I was going to get into the um, George Benson uh, situation. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm, I'm fascinated right. about that. All right, the second question. Um, who were your role models growing up? Well, my role models growing up um, came from home. Um, they were in my house. My dad, my mom, my brothers, my sister. Um, you know, because I, that's what I saw. Um, and what people you know, don't know, I don't want to get to it. But um, um, I can say that because I was a special need um, child, no one knew. And um, so I really looked up to them because they really, you know, my mother was a home mom. They really, everybody did their part, you know, in the house to make sure that I was fine. Um, my dad was a man uh, of, of many things. One thing for sure that I realized all he wanted to do was work and provide for his family. Uh, in those trades, he's my superhero. My mom is my superhero, teaching me how to love, compassion, life, and cook. So, so I'm, my mom's a hero, my dad. My brothers, growing up, seeing my brothers be all American, was something really special. I, I didn't realize that until I got older. I thought it was normal to grow up with athletic brothers school, college, playing Division One, seeing them on commercials and different things. But, I, we all, and, but we still all work together. You know, my dad, we had to complete a business um, when we were younger. We kept us together. We worked together. We did the major league. We traveled. So we worked together. We played together. We went to church together. Um, you know, a lot of things. And so they wind up being my heroes. And outside of my family, it all depends on um, comic book guy too, so you know, I had a serious imagination. My imagination was so wild, but I'm too old for that. I mean, my parents were taking me to the, the, the street psychiatrist when I was younger, oh. because even though they gave me toys, I made my own. You know, I made my own. I had to take a piece of paper and twist it, make my own bed, but it was breasts, different things. So they thought.
thought that was strange. So well, what he told them is, no, he has an imagination. I mean, and that carried on into me now. I know I have gigs um, you know, this week coming. I already know my, my setup. The same way I thought then, I think now. I know when I have to load up, pack up, I already went and scoped out the area of the stage. So, you know, it just grew with me. They thought I was nuts. <laughs> they thought I was nuts yeah. doing that. But I wasn't nuts. That's a part of my life. But I, in growing up, seeing some of the people that I analyzed in gospel, um, you know, Doc McKenzie, uh, my uncle, um, Reverend James from Navy, who either made me see or that I really knew rise to fame and fortune and blessed through the gospel music. And not knowing that I was surrounded in So I have here all um, just two Marvel comic books. You know, wow, it's like the superheroes. You know, instead of buying superheroes, I'll make my own characters. Make, name my own Superman, my own Batman, my own Black Panther, whatever I had to do. I wasn't much into reading the books. It wasn't I'm, a book yeah, one. I'm on, no. Uh, I, oh my God, no, not book one. My brother tried. They did. Well, they did, but they didn't understand. Disability at the time, you know, oh, okay. something that they thought was wrong, but um, it worked out. Okay. It worked out. My heroes were my people in my house. I grew up with my, my late pastor, Mel McKenzie. He was one of my heroes. He could talk. He was um, the ground, the, the ground work man, rooted spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know, from there I wasn't just there. I was in how to stay in the stage. Um, the third question is, uh, who were your musical influences that made you become a musician? Wow. One of them, uh, again, in my household, was my father was an awesome washboard man. Yes, the washboard player. That's something he learned from Georgia. He played the washboard. My mother was a piano player. My dad played piano, too. And my dad um, directed the choir. My eldest brother, Henry, was one of the first drummers I grew up watching and got inspired by. Um, young, the young man that's on my workshop, his company, um, Earl Grice, is one of the, the gentlemen um, that I grew up admiring. Jeff Davis, uh, let's see, Omar Hakeem on the Doors of Love, inspired me as a drummer. And I just appreciate when time changed. Start getting to when I start learning about production. And my brother Daryl, just phenomenal, the vocalist. And like I said, my brother Henry was the first recorded artist in my family. So I admired that growing up. Um, and seeing him. And um, I just took all those bits and pieces of, of vocal playing. You know, and, and admiring, as I said, I got older. When I, I didn't realize some of the people I was working with. Until I got into the industry, and still understand, you know. But um, I, I admire him um, as time went on. You know, all the people that I have worked with, and, and um, you know, but personally, the people I, I mentioned were the ones that were hands on. I saw the other chance to work. Okay. Okay. Uh, the fourth uh, question is: What made you want to become a student of the arts? I had a choice, and I heard another professional, which again, I was young, say, you got a choice in life, to be something or to be nothing. And I respect the art of music, and it, it made me respect it when I, as I started to work with top professionals, not knowing that they were professionals, and these were people behind the scenes. I have a cousin named Charles Bettison, who was the first that I grab, gravitated to. Um, I, I got a chance to work with Bruce Springsteen through the lighting in the 70s. He had, no, I'm sorry, in the 80s, 87. I worked 
No, no, no. Yeah, that's that's later, okay. later in the uh, second half of, of the interview. Uh, that's you know, great answers for the fourth uh, question. Um, the fifth question, or no, take my three breaks, music breaks. Um, the fifth question is, how did you come up with your band, Sea Dreams? Okay, um, that's uh, the fifth question. Um, we're going to come back. I'm going to take two, three breaks in a row, music breaks in a row, and then come back with the great Mr. Craig Redman, interview with Craig Redman. Um, this is uh, the Rashad Mitchell Show, live on Gyroscope Radio from 2 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Gyroscope Radio. Be right back.